Good morning. My name is Tom Miles, and I'm uh, the executive director of the U.S. Biochar Initiative, and I'd like to welcome you to uh, National Biochar Week. Uh, many thanks to uh, Tina Metzer at the National Center for Resource Development and the many others, our uh, board members of the U.S. Biochar Initiative and sponsors for organizing this week. We've set up the week uh, basically in five segments. Today we'll be talking from 11 to 2 um, about the U.S. Biochar Initiative and governmental programs and funding. Uh, tomorrow we'll discuss biochar market strategy. Uh, Wednesday we'll have green space, landscaping, urban use, and uh, remediation. And Thursday, agriculture, forestry, and we'll finish up on Friday with a discussion of Carbon, biochar a game changer for the new carbon negative economy, current and future markets. Today's program will start out with uh, examples of how biochar is used in the real world. I'll go through some biochar products and, and uses, uh, followed by Dr. Greg Mahler, who will talk to us about biochar and Biden opportunities in the new climate driven bioeconomy. Uh, we'll have uh, three quick talks or videos during the day. And we'll, for the most of the day, we'll have the uh, panel moderated by Dr. Carlos Rodriguez of the U.S. Forest Service uh, with government agencies. And we'll finish off with a quick talk by Gary Johnson of National Carbon Technologies. So biochar in the real world, how is it actually being used? We thought we'd start off with some examples of how biochar is actually being used. We hear a lot and see a lot of research, but we see less in terms of apl actual applications. The US Biochar Initiative, just briefly, uh, is a nonprofit organization promoting the use of biochar, uh, production and use of biochar. We concentrate on networking, education, and demonstration. We're a volunteer group. We've been in existence for 10 years. We've hosted conferences, workshops, demos, put out a newsletter. We've just created a biochar learning center on an industry directory. You can look at our website, uh, join us on social media, or join us on a discussion group, biochar uh, at groups.io. So what's our vision? To leave a legacy of fertile soils and carbon sequestered by raising awareness of an increasing utilization of biochar through collaborative efforts with organizations involved in production, application, and research. Well, what does this mean in the United States? In the United States, according to the Department of Energy, we have a billion tons of biomass that we can harvest annually sustainably, and we can convert that to various carbon products. That would create about 500 million tons of carbon for use in energy, food, climate-friendly buildings, healthy soils, clean water, and clean air. And from that, we could sequester about 250 million tons of biochar in the soil or in building products or other uses. And that would be equal to about 625 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent, which is equal to the ecological footprint of about 39 million people, about 12% of the current US population or about 9% of the population in 2050. So it's a laudable target and how do we get there? Well, we're in progress. On the left-hand side, you can see the groundbreaking for a plant in Oregon that will be producing jet fuel from biomass and it will be producing biochar as a co-product. On the right-hand side, you can see a fast pyrolysis system that will also produce biochar and energy products. Even today from our energy systems, we're producing biochar. Here are co-products from uh, biomass energy plants. In the lower left-hand corner, you can see uh, biochar from Pacific Biochar delivered to a compost yard. Pacific Biochar is now selling biochar carbon credits on the European market. In the upper right-hand corner, you can see a truckload from Oregon Biochar Solutions. So they're delivering large volumes of biochar to agricultural uses. Biochars are being used in many ways. We Think mostly about biochar being used in agriculture with retail garden, landscaping, turf, and horticulture. There are many biochar products going into these higher value markets, uh, but it's also used in forestry and water quality and environment remediation and in non-soil products. And the attributes of biochar that are particularly useful are shown here on the left. You can see the structure of biochar, uh, the honeycomb-like structure, which allow, affords it a water holding capacity, the ability to absorb nutrients. In the center, we have the uh, biology, the synergism between biochar and, and biology, which is well known. And more recently, there's been a focus on the electrochemical properties of biochar. Uh, 
the ability of biochar and minerals to uh, reduce the amount of energy that plants need to uh, uh, for growth. One of the things we don't uh, pay too much attention to is that animals benefit from biochar properties. They inoculate, distribute, and mix biochars in soil. Uh, around the world, we see biochar being fed to animals of all kinds. They uh, execrate, they inoculate the biochar in their rumens and the digestion process. Uh, the dung beetles shown at the bottom and the worms will then further process the, the biochars to improve our soils. You can even feed biochar to chickens. Uh, it, it'll reduce disease and increase egg production. And that's what Sister Miriam here in Kenya has shown around the world. Biochar is getting a, a, uh, a reputation as in Kenya, they call it biochar is a farmer's best friend. And you can see uh, trainer Everlane here on the right with her bumper crop of sorghum, uh, her healthy corn crop compared to the synthetic corn crop by making biochar in the simple pit kiln shown on the left and combining it with manure. Back home, we do the same thing. We combine biochar with uh, other organics into uh, high value garden, horticultural landscape, turf and, and tree crops or tree uh, uh, products. Uh, and you can see there's a growing number of these products. Uh, on the lower left hand side, you can, or the left hand side, you can see a list of some of these products. And these products are literally out of this world. Bio 365, the last one listed there is being tested right now on the International Space Station. Biochar's complement and beneficial supplements. Humic acid has been used in agriculture for years. In this slide, American Biochar Company produces the Vital Blend Soil Amendment, uh, which is a humate biochar blend. Anderson's also now has a product called Humic DG Char X. Biochars are used in liquids. They're injected or sprayed. You can see the injection on the left-hand side in no-till agriculture in what's called a cross lot. Uh, and the, uh, 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 in this particular case, the biochar is used to offset acid toxicity in acid soils from urea injection. On the right-hand side, Lesco products has just introduced a, uh, a liquid or granular product for golf and turf applications by combining biochar with biotics, uh, with biologicals uh, and nutrients to make a bio biotic soil amendment. And ahead of us, China is producing 500,000 tons of biochar-based fertilizer, fertilizer a year. They find that the granulated fertilizer uh, uh, helps growth, germination, productivity. They're aiming for 3 million tons a year. They have about 52 plants, or 62 plants uh, that are currently producing, uh, and we may be headed in this direction. Biochar is typically used in, in compost. Uh, we're seeing 5 to 10% biochar being added in compost. Uh, to reduce odors, reduce greenhouse gases, and improve the compost biology. That product is being used in row crops and in, in uh, high value crops, tomatoes and others in California, uh, to improve water retention and improve growth. Also being used successfully in vineyards and establishment of the vineyards and also in cover crops. And biochar can also be used uh, in situ to uh, make biochar from vineyard prunings. And here Kelpie Wilson is uh, training some vineyard managers and how to take their prunings uh, and make biochar for use in their crops. We now have mobile carbonizers to recover biochar from wildfire damaged timber and urban wood, wood waste. We demonstrated these about a year ago. There are about 40 now in, op in operation. In the lower right hand side, you can see uh, biochar that's been recovered from wildfire debris from this year. As you know, we uh, burned a million acres of uh, timber this year in Oregon, and this bio was just generated last week. Progressive farmers incorporate biochar and biochar blends. We'll hear from Natural Plant Solutions, uh, who uses a biochar in overseeding pasture, applying seed, biochar, and organic amendments in a no-till drill. Another no-till farmer, Jason Mock, tells us biochar is a change agent. He's been experimenting with biochar and manure-based biochars. And as you may have seen this, J.R. Bollinger, farmer from Missouri, uh, using biochar in strip tillage, where he's combining biochar with fertilizers and other organic amendments in the dry tank on the right. Uh, and as he uh, develops individual furrows, combines it with other ingredients, winds up with a bumper corn crop. He's increased his organic carbon by uh, from less than 1% uh, soil organic carbon to 3.5% in the last five years, increased his yield and increased the quality of the product. 
Biochar is even being combined in seed balls, seeded aerially, certain seeds, uh, certain um, uh, grass seeds and certain uh, tree seeds uh, can be seeded aerially. You still need water to germinate it. But here we have on the left, uh, seed balls being distributed in Kenya and on the right, uh, air seed te technologies uh, in, in the US. So biochars are also used to improve uh, uh, for environmental management to capture nutrients, metals, organics, bacteria, and remediation. In the upper right, you see biochar added to fiber, uh, seed, and fertilizer and hydraulic seeding for establishing uh, grass on banks after roadside construction become a very common use. In the lower right, you see biochar combined with sand in a system to remove leachate and chemical oxygen demand from a, a log yard. And the left hand side, biochar is being used in mixes for stormwater filtration. It's being used to establish and repair trees. Uh, it's being used in tree planting and lawns and rain gardens. Uh, these pictures are, happen to be from Stockholm, Sweden, where it's used in stormwater management and walkways and septic systems. We're beginning to see interest in these uses here in the United States. And here's a graphic showing the uh, structured soil in Sweden where combinations of biochar and aggregates are used to provide some breathing space, open up the compacted urban soils uh, and provide pathways for roots uh, for healthy trees in Stockholm. And this technique is taking over in Scandinavia. Uh, the US uh, nonprofit Bridge to Reefs has used biochar in applications like uh, septic systems, uh, solving problems like we have in places like Long, Long Island, other areas. Biochar has been used extensively actually in green roofs. Uh, we don't hear very much about it, but it lightens up the, uh, uh, the mixture and has been very successful. Here's an example from uh, University of Nebraska, Nebraska at Lincoln. In the US, we see on the right-hand side, the biochar being incorporated in some building materials and some construction blocks and on the, on the lower right on, in masonry. And on the left, we see it in Australia and other countries in asphalt. We may see carbon sequestered in the form of biochar in these kinds of road construction and building products uh, in the future. On the experimental side, biochars are being used in carbon negative building products. Uh, these are still under development, but it's being used in concrete, and plasters, and composites. There will soon be uh, commercial products available, uh, both uh, adding biochars, biochars from biosolids and other products in concrete. Um, and we also have some commercial pr production evolving with biochar plastic composites, uh, which are nearing commercial production. And so finally, biochars are part of a growing green carbon economy. Uh, we need cheap sources of biochar uh, to build a carbon, green carbon economy. We need companies that will specialize in carbon products for low value and large volume markets. These will likely be co-products of energy and other products. We need to recover more carbon from biomass than we are now. So new research is directed to modify biochars improving biochar performance. We see everything from fuel cells, batteries, electrodes, uh, and uh, uh, net carbon nanotubes, carbon gels, and carbofibers. And one of the topics uh, of interest that we'll be hearing about is improving wastewater treatment with modified biochars.